Like and subscribe and click the bell icon to get new video updates. GDP growth beats expectations, but who benefits most as profits outpace wages? Australia's economic growth beat analyst forecasts over the first few months of the year, but there is evidence the benefits are being felt more by business owners than workers. GDP rose more than economists were expecting, with the economy growing 3.3% over the past year compensation of employees was up 5.5% over the past year, but business profits were up 21.6% The Australian economy grew 0.8% in the March quarter and 33 over the past year, according to the national accounts data from the Australian Bureau of Statistics. Economists surveyed by Reuters had typically been expecting quarterly growth of 0.5% and 2.9% over the year to March 31st. The biggest contributors to the better-than-expected result were a rise in inventories as businesses restocked following supply chain disruptions, plus 1 percentage point, household consumption, plus 0.8 of a percentage point, government spending, plus 0.6 of a percentage point. The biggest drag on the economy was a surge in imports, which subtracted 1.7 percentage points from GDP, as some covered related supply bottlenecks eased and businesses restocked. The ABS noted that the first three months of this year saw the biggest jump in imports since the December quarter of 2009. Consumers happy to get out there and spend the rise in government spending was largely driven by health costs as the Omicron wave of COVID-19 hit Australia in earnest. But, despite disruptions from both Omicron and bad weather in Australia's east, travel, Recreation and eating out dominated the 1.5% rise in household spending. Read more transport services, plus 60%, recreation and culture, plus 4.8%, and hotels, cafes and restaurants, plus 5.3%, were all big beneficiaries as COVID-19 restrictions eased. The ABS noted that the March quarter was the first time discretionary spending, purchases that consumers do not have to make, had recovered to be above pre-pandemic levels. ANS economist Felicity Emmett said that was a good sign for the economic outlook. Many of us, ourselves, the ABA, are expecting consumer spending to be a key driver of strong growth through 2022, she told ABC TV's The Business. So it is suggesting that, despite the fact that consumer confidence has been pretty weak, consumers are really happy to get out there and spend. Much of that spending was paid for by a fall in the household saving ratio from 13.4 to 11.4 percent, although it remains well above pre-pandemic levels of 7 percent or less. So it has got a lot further to fall, and I expect that we will see that over the next couple of years, added Ms Emmett. Wages growth trails surge in profits One reason why savings rates are falling is that wages growth continues to lag behind the rising price of goods and services. The ABS reported a 1.8% increase in the total compensation of employees during the quarter, even though hours worked fell 0.9% due mainly to Omicron-related absences. Ms Emmett said ANZ's calculations show that means hourly pay rose around 2.7% in the quarter, and 5.3% over the past year, far more than the 2.4% pay increase recorded in the ABS March quarter wage price index. Read more I think that that is going to really ring alarm bells for the RBA, she said, referring to the implications that much bigger pay rises would have for continued high inflation. However. Ms Emmett also noted that the fall in hours worked during the quarter was due to the Omicron wave of COVID-19 and that many workers would have received paid sick leave while absent from work, skewing the hourly pay figure higher. This appears to be reflected in the national accounts, where the rise in pay was matched by a 1.9% rise in employed persons, meaning the increase in pay was spread across more workers, even if they worked fewer hours. The ABS also recorded a jump in labor productivity of 1.7% over the quarter, as workers maintained output despite staff absences, leading to a strong productivity gain of 2.8% over the past year.
This resulted in a 2.7% annual fall in so-called real unit labor costs, the key measure of the cost of wages as a share of output produced. It comes as no surprise then that the so-called gross operating surplus, essentially profits, of non-financial businesses jumped 7.3% in the quarter, led by mining, due to big commodity price increases for LNG, coal and iron ore, and wholesale trade, on improved profit margins for grains, petroleum and cars. However, the ABS noted a fall in profits for manufacturers, largely driven by a rise in input costs, as well as falls for construction, hospitality and other services as government subsidies wound down. Profit share of GDP at record high over the past year, compensation of employees has risen 5.5%.